Hi guys, welcome to Chikri Science Academy. In today's session, we have come up with another video on Animal Kingdom. In this session, we are going to discuss important questions from the NEET and CET examination. This session, I am also going to demonstrate you how NCRT textbook is going to be your secret weapon to crack this examination. This session, you will be getting a lot of things and sure short questions in your exam. So stay tuned till the end and let's see the first question. So in the first question, we can see it is asking which of the following statements about all four which is spongilla, leech, dolphin and penguins is correct. So let's read the first statement. Penguin is homeothermic means warm blooded while the remaining three are poikolothermic it means cold blooded. So we know dolphins are also mammal and like any other mammal dolphins are also warm blooded. So that is why this statement can't be correct. Second statement says leech is a freshwater form while others are marine. It is also wrong because we know spongilla is a Freshwater sponge belongs to phylum Porifera. So this statement is also wrong. Third statement says spongilla has special collard cells called quinocytes not found in the remaining three. Actually it is correct. Quinocyte cells are only found in spongilla. So that is why it has to be a correct statement. Leech, dolphin, penguin they don't have it. Fourth they all are bilaterally symmetrical which is also wrong because spongilla is a asymmetric sponge. So this statement is also wrong. So that is why our answer number three, third option C is correct. Let's move to the next question. But before I go to the next question, let me demonstrate you how your NCRT textbook is going to be very, very important for you. So here you can see in the NCRT book, they have clearly mentioned porifera have characteristics of flagellated quinocytes. So this quinocyte cells, collar cells are only and only found in porifera. So now we can go to the next question. So in the next question they are asking which one of the following statement about certain giving animals is correct. So first is round worm we call it as Ascalmanthus are pseudocilomates. Second mollusks are acilomate. This definitely can't be the answer because mollusks for insects they are telling it's pseudocilomate it also not true because mollusks and insects are silomates. They have a true body cavity. They have silome. Fourth, flat worms are silomates, which is also wrong. Flat worms are not silomates. Okay. So the correct answer is Ascalmenthes are pseudosilomate. So this is the correct answer. But let me give you a detailed report on this. So you can see here in NCRT book, they have clearly mentioned Ascalmenthes are pseudocilomates. So that is why Ascalmenthes is our right answer. Flatworm or platyhelminthes are basically acilomates. They don't have a silome. So that is why this is also incorrect. So now let's go to the next question. So in the next question, they are asking you which one of the following groups of animals is bilateral, symmetrical and triploblastic. So we will see cylindrata. Cylindrata is the wrong answer. Ascalmenthes, tenophores and sponges. So we know out of all these four, Ascalmenthes are having all three traits, which is bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic. Let me show you how. So you can see here they have explained about Ascalmenthes. We call them round worms. Uh, they have bilaterally, they are bilaterally uh, symmetrical and they are triploblastic as well as they are pseudocilomate as it came in the previous question. Remember all these questions are neat exam PYQs which have come up before and they are those questions which are mostly repeated you know in the every year after year. So let's move to the next question now. So in the next question they are asking crocodile and penguin are similar to whale and dogfish in which of the following features. So do they lay egg and guard them until they hatch? That is definitely wrong. Okay. Next question is possess bony skeleton which is also not true. Third, they have gill slits at some stage. So we know what is common in all four. They all are chordata and chordata do have gill slits at some stage of their life. So that is why third answer has to be correct. However, let's read the fourth one also. They possess a solid single standard central nervous system, which is also not true because there is a complete network, not just single. Okay. So now let me show you some insight here from the NCRT what it says. So you can see uh, it, this is they have shown a chordata characteristics which mentions that chordata fundamentally should have those four things that is first it presence of notochord, second hollow dorsal nerve cord, third 
paired of pharyngeal gill slits at any stage of their life and fourth they should have the post anal tail okay so that is why our answer about the gill slits was correct let's move to the next question so next question they are asking you an example of animal having a single opening to the outside that serves both as mouth as well as anus we call it as such system is called blind sac plant we call it as blind sac plant so definitely it has to be a undeveloped uh, you know in the top of the phylums top three or four or five you know phylums have a blind sac plan because later on they have a tube within a tube body plan where there is a separate uh, you know opening for mouth and separate for the anus so let's read our option octopus octopus definitely not uh, asteria cecilia they all are highly developed and fourth you see fasciola so this has to be the right answer let me give you a detailed analysis on this so you can see here first of all understand they have clearly mentioned that digestive system in platyhelminthes has only single opening uh, you know to the outside of the body and serves as you know mouth and anus both blind sick body plan this line is very very important which explains about platyhelminthes has such plan now the option was fasciola so it has came from the examples of the platyhelminthes you can see phylum platyhelminthes where the examples are fasciola we call it as liver fluke as well as tinea that is tapeworm some more important I have underlined and highlighted for you important for the exam for the platyhelminthes they are also called as flatworms and we know that they are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic acylomate okay and on top of that they have a special flame cells this is very important flame cells which helps in excretion and osmoregulation and these are the examples planaria which has a very high power of regeneration apart from that tinea and fasciola so now let's move to the next question so in the next question they are asking one of the representative belongs to phylum arthropoda so first of all this question is confusing because all are fish but they are not really fish first of all i'll tell you about silver fish silver fish is also called as lepisma why it is called silver is because of its silvery appearance but let me tell you this is definitely not a fish it is a you know it belongs to arthropoda it's an insect so basically this is a arthropoda this has the correct answer puffer fish is actually a, super, a class fish so it's got it basically you know this is not the right answer flying fish is also a proper fish which we call it as fish fish you know class spices so it is also not the right answer cuttle fish is basically mollusca cuttle fish or you know we call it as sepia sepia or a cuttle fish this is a mollusca it's the second largest phylum of the animal kingdom now let's move to the next question so in the next question they are asking you two common characteristics found in centipedes cockroaches and crabs first of all understand they all belong to arthropoda so let's see what is common for arthropoda jointed legs and chitinous exoskeleton compound as an anal cerci that is not the correct answer green gland and trachea is also not correct because they all these three don't have this in common and book lungs and antenna is also not true so the correct answer has to be a jointed feet or appendages or legs and chitinous exoskeleton but let me show you some more detail inside here so you can see phylum arthropoda the largest phylum of the animal kingdom and their body consists of head thorax abdomen and they have jointed appendages so moreover you can see their body of arthropod is having a chitinous exoskeleton so you can see how ncrt each and every line is very very important for the exam so now let's see the next question So in the next question, they are asking a marine cartilaginous fish that can produce electric current. What it is? Now let me tell you here. A lot of students find the between these two options very difficult. Torpedo and trigon. Let me tell you the correct answer is torpedo. Torpedo produces the electric current, not trigon. I'll tell you why. Because it's clearly mentioned in the NCRT that in the fish, basically. Some of them have electric organs that is torpedo for trigon. They have separately mentioned it has a poison sting. Okay, so now let's go to the next question. So in the next question, they are asking you which of the following characteristics is mainly responsible for diversification of insects on the land. So what was the main basis of classification? They are asking 
for the insects was it segmentation bilateral symmetry exoskeleton or the eyes so i am leaving this to you you have to answer this question in the comment box below and i am very sure after watching this video you all are encouraged and motivated for your upcoming neat examination do read the ncrt books and do solve a lot of questions chakravi academy is with you and i am going to come up with a lot of videos with all the chapters for needed for the neat examination as well as cet so bye bye for now